we were going to come back to excluding kids from so you know from restaurants. Yeah, that's right. So I mean, the, the thing is that all three of those kind of phenomena are, are major issues for adults. But in children, there's been yeah, it's a very little long COVID apart from maybe the kids who come out of intensive care and often the, the kids who started off um, with medical illnesses and so on. They're going to take a while to recover. Um, but yeah, then so we come to excluding children from society. And, and I think we need to be clear here that this is a highly coercive public health policy. You know, the definition of coercion is either that I threaten you if you don't do the thing that you're required to do, or I, you know, one, one of the ways I can threaten you is not just to harm you, but to take away access to a key social good. Uh, so social goods like um, education, um, uh, healthcare, uh, f- but free interaction with others. That's, that's also an important social good. Um, you know, setting aside, you know, whether people have a right to go to a restaurant or whatever, that people have a right to have, you know, free interaction, free association with others. And taking that away from people, taking that away from children, um, it's hard to see how that could possibly be uh, justified uh, for this um, virus. And just in general, um, you know, I even even for people who are in favour of, of kind of vaccine mandates and segregation, um, you know, maybe while we're trying to get the vaccination levels up to a certain level, you might think some people might think they're justified. How could it possibly be justified, especially in a place like New York, where there's, 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 there's people who are vaccinated. Then there's even the, among the unvaccinated people, most of those have been infected previously. I mean, New York had one of the most unmitigated epidemics. Um, you know, at least 40 or 50 percent of Americans, probably more have been infected. So there's, there's a tiny um, proportion of people who don't have immunity. And um, and in addition to that, why would you know why, again why would we want to segregate people because ultimately um even with you know boosters and so on it doesn't look to me like we're going to be able to prevent post-vaccination infections and so what you might actually want in the long term all things considered uh is that you might want people to get infected sooner rather than later you know as, as i think i said previously no one's getting any younger uh, people's immunity from their vaccine or their previous infection is waning so we want there to be some continuous exposure. And so segregating people might not even produce a benefit. It might produce a net harm in addition to the harms that are caused by locking people out of society. I find it astonishing. Um, there are people who always, um, I think, use sensationalist language to describe some of these restrictions. New York's pushing me so far that they're, they're making it true. They're making it true, all those things that they're saying about the brute force of the state. 90% of eligible people are vaccinated in New York City. They've had the epidemic. There is no threat on hospitals. They've done two things. One, they've mandated it for private employment. They speculate that 10,000 people, something like that, if they don't capitulate, they're going to lose their jobs, which is an unnecessary blow against their lives and livelihood. And then this thing on kids, which I think is it's too much. They're out of control. And this is done by the, this is the leftmost city. There's no, you can't blame it on the Republicans. Okay, it's 100% Democratic controlled. It's left of center. And they believe that what they're doing is the virtue. They like believe that they're doing the Lord's work. And I just think they're not. And I know they're not. And I don't think that they understand what they're doing. 